Round 11 saw Swan Districts taking aim at another potential victim, having already secured eight scalps in a row. This time it was Subiaco who had to confront the classy black and whites in white hot form and on their home paddock. Ugly looking kick. Will tumble inside attacking 50. Scooped up by Gapen. Got a hand pass away. It comes back for Swans and that's a terrific goal to Davis. Knocked down at the back by Subiaco. Kayla Thompson was right there. A wheeler will gather. Stops, checks, snaps, goals. Onus on him is now to kick a long goal from 60 metres. Gets plenty of the footy. Oh, that's a great kick. That's gone through half goal post high. From the attacking edge of the centre square. He'll put it long towards full forward. Not a oh, remarkable. You said before he's one of the best marks of the comp. <laughs> well, I meant aerial marks, not necessarily falling over, but uh, when you've got a bag of tricks, you use them any way you can, and he's certainly got plenty of them. DeLuca's kick, not a bad one. Just fell short of Delahunty. He's going to get back first on it. Elects to soccer the ball off the ground. Not a bad policy. Burnham going back with pace for Swan Districts. He's got a couple to beat. One of them, Joyce, gathers it 45 metres out. Floated toward goal, and there's one for Subiaco. Worked out and away from it. Wade was right there. DeLuca, his hand pass was intercepted. Spills out that to Horsley. On in turn to Waters. Spun out of trouble. This would be a terrific goal for Subiaco. What a kick. Great play, Subi. Not in front position against Stevenson. Kicks around the body. Diving out. Davis couldn't quite trap it. Would sit up for Riddick. He'll get a shot away. He'll kick the goal. Subiaco, an opportunity. Although Swans get back in numbers. Not tried to... Knock it through, but it's picked up by DeLuca, who snaps it over his head. He manages to get a kick in. No mark taken, still the ball in dispute. Here's Horsley, natural left footer, lines them up from a difficult angle. Oh, that's a magnificent goal. Gee, there are some contenders for goal of the day this afternoon. Inside the forward 50, Gapen couldn't mark it this time. Stevenson couldn't gather either. It'll sit back for Rumble. His kick was well smothered. Good desperate play from Swan Districts. Chance again for Davis. He breaks the tackle. He kicks a goal. What a game of footy this is. Waters with the footy. Swan District supporters howling their derision. It goes to DeLuca. Oh, he lines them up. That's a great reply, was it? Touched over the wrong side of the line, I reckon DeLuca. Answering goal, he has kicked it. This time he pushes it into the uh, oh. goal square. Nearly a good mark down there to Swan Districts. Yaren feeds it up to Bristow. Here's Yaren, he gets it back again, and he's kicked a goal. I think that could be it. That was it, and for the victors, four goals apiece to Boland and Yaren, three apiece to Waters and DeLuca. Bristow and Hampson each kick two and Horsley one. Whilst for Swan Districts, Ryan Davis a great day out. Five goals, four to Tim Gapen. Kerry kicked three and one apiece to Riddock and Knott. For Swan Districts, Riggio after a, a slow start amassed 27 possessions, 20 possessions and 10 marks, four goals to the informed Tim Gape and Ryan Davis, five goals, one from 15 kicks. He also took six marks, 25 possessions to Alari, Bocourse 23, not 18 kicks, three handballs and five good marks, one goal. Burnham, a good young player developing 18 possessions and Graham Jetta, 20 possessions. Whilst for Subiaco, the winners, Horsley, a great skipper's game with 27 possessions. 23 to Hampson. Bristow, two goals also from 25 possessions. Boland, after kicking one goal to quarter time, finished with four from 18 possessions, took eight marks. Kayla Thompson, 22. 22 to Hildebrandt. Yaron, four goals, one from nine kicks and nine handballs. And Della Hunty, 11 kicks. Six handballs and five marks and also a goal. Put it all together, really nothing much in it. Swans had one more kick, two more handballs. They lost the game because Subiaco went inside 50 six more times and they had a few centre, well, one centre break more and in the end that had a telling effect on the scoreboard. They led all the way, the Lions, at quarter time by 14 points, by 11 at half time, at three quarter time the margin, 24 points and who would have thought it would have blown out to twice that margin? 48 points in the, in the end, 22 goals, 10, 142. Subiaco defeated Swan Districts, 14, 10, 94. Yeah, one of Subi's best today, George Hampson, mate. Did you get it, while, while you are out there, did you get a sense of just how good that game was to watch? Yeah, I mean, it started, started, you know, quick and fiery and a few goals kicked. We talked about that, letting teams get that first one on the ball within, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So, 
it was a good contest. It was, you know, quick flowing and, um, yeah, a, bit, a lot of open space today, which was a good game. And a milestone for Jason Bristow in his 100th game. A couple of special moments with goals late in the game. What does he mean to the club and what sort of impact does he have? Unbelievable effort by Jason today. You know, it was... A, it was big during the week. The lead up to that, you know, he's 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 a warrior and he plays a lot. He plays with his heart and soul on the line every week. So that was a big focus for us coming into the game. And you know, we weathered it early. And you know, in the last quarter, we fought on for him and we got the chockies. So. And only a, coming off a five-day break, it was a pretty bruising encounter. How, how are you feeling? And what's the general vibe within the boys? There's a few sore bodies after that. Yeah, we were, we were a bit sore after the Claremont game. You know, they, we got them the first time and we they uh, they hit us hard last week, but. We rested up, we hit the ice baths and um, we wanted to get these boys back because they got us last time, so yeah, it was a good win. All right, mate, go and enjoy it. Cheers. Since being in the coach's box, did you get a sense of just how entertaining that game was, or was it more stressful than anything? Oh, I don't know about entertaining, mate. Um, it was pretty stressful, as you probably uh, the commentary would have heard from uh, next door from us. Uh, look, it was a high-pressure game. Yeah, you know, we had to come here to win. Yeah, you know, if we'd lost, we're sort of back in the middle of the field, middle of the pack. And I just think it was just a sign of the, you know where the boys and how that much that they've learned from over the last four weeks. It seemed in that last quarter that uh, Swan Districts were pressing about halfway through. What did you notice changed then? Well, obviously, they were getting a bit of rebound off, 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 our, off our half forward line. They had not there. They got a couple of goals. They're an emotional side, and they really got their game going, and they kicked a couple of goals, important goals from our turnovers. So we just wanted to make it a one-on-one -on -one game, and in the end, we were able to sort of obviously nullify their run and got a couple of easy goals there at the end. Um, coming off a five-day break, and there seemed to be a few sore bodies after that contest. Um, how, how are their boys looking after that, I guess, and going forward? Yeah, look, obviously a five-day turnaround, but I don't think we brought our game five days ago. So that's why I'm proud of the way they got through the game. Yeah, we've got a couple of sore boys, but we'll look, just look to recover and make sure we get those boys right. But the pleasing thing is, is that we've got um, a reserve side that's playing good footy and some guys are really pressing for selection. So, yeah, we've got a long night on Tuesday night. And uh, finally, on Jason Bristow, his 100th game milestone. What does he mean to the club? What impact has he had? Oh, he's just a true clubman. Yeah, he wears his heart in his sleeve. He leads on field. He, he leads the club off field. And to get a fitting win for him in his 100th game, being an interstater as well, he's, he's one of ours now. Um, I think it's just a sign of the, you know, sign of the respect that the boys have for him. Congratulations, mate. Cheers, mate. In other matches, East Fremantle came from behind to defeat Peel Thunder, Perth were demoralised by East Perth to the tune of 80 points and West Perth held off a fast finishing Clermont by nine points. And a new look ladder, East Perth have gone to the top of the table over the top of Swan Districts who sit in second, a game clear of Subiaco, likewise a game clear in front of East Fremantle. Just outside the four is West Perth, but they are two games clear of South Fremantle, Perth and Clermont. Peel Thunder still on that one win. So next week, we catch up with the new league leaders, East Perth, as they host South Fremantle, who will hopefully be freshened up after the bye. The Royals versus the Bulldogs at Medibank Stadium, live from 2pm.